porn and sex work and prostitution stripping, I think that that is a societal ill. If sex work is a societal ill, then all of society has been sick since day one and should just destroy itself. Or we can have a healthy relationship with sex work. Like we try to have a healthy relationship with other things, and but then again, we don't maybe, and that's the problem. Do we even have a healthy relationship with police work or with being teachers or with being priests or with being radio hosts or content creators? Do what gets you to your best place, regardless of what people say about you. Because no matter who you are, people have something to say about you. If you're conservative, the progressive hates you. If you're progressive, the conservative hates you. If you're a sex worker, the prudes hate you. If you're a prude, the sex workers hate you. It doesn't matter. Everyone hates you. That's why you have to be the person who doesn't hate you. Because you know that as long as you're joyous, happy, kind, thoughtful, considerate, warm, wholesome, there's a relationship to be had with yourself that is that is worthy. Okay, do you guys know who Brett Cooper is? She is a conservative. Uh, she's really interesting. Uh, she's very conservative. So sometimes I don't even like get through all of her videos because like it's too conservative for me. But at the same time, if I had to watch a conservative, I will watch Brett Cooper just because she's like young and interesting and Gen Z and she's not very, um, like she's a little bit more, uh, I don't want to say nuanced, but kind of want to say nuanced. Like she definitely has her own opinions. She has her conservative sticking, like, like talking points for sure. But she also seems to have her own opinions when it comes to other things. So I definitely want to give her a chance. I am going to play her. I think she reminds me. It's funny. She doesn't really. Re I can't tell. Sometimes conservatives talk in such a way now that I can't tell if it's like not a grift. But I can't tell if it's just like too much of a shtick. Because like. She doesn't sound like someone who has like real passionate opinions necessarily as somebody who has the normal opinions and maybe a few of her own. Like she recently like was like, I like Barbie and I don't care what Ben Shapiro thinks. And I was like, yes, girl, like what you like, girl. But I'm curious what you guys think of her. Does she seem performative or not? This video is called, whoop, 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 is called um, The Reality of OnlyFans. And because I'm an OnlyFans content creator, I thought I would go ahead and watch this. Now, I grew up conservative. I was on talk radio. I'm probably had if I stayed conservative I would have gone on the same trajectory as like any of the conservatives you see on YouTube now but I just like it's not my vibe and though I appreciate the bubble I am not part of the bubble but I always like to hear what conservative women think about OnlyFans just because I want to see if one of them has a more nuanced opinion of it I'm not sure that Brett will but I thought we'd check it out okay let's go ahead and watch how's the volume her audio's Welcome very back good. to another episode of Off the Clock. We are doing a Hi, Brett. I, I, a reaction today. I'm excited about this one. I did oh, a she's reacting. video about Pornhub before Christmas, but I was really passionate about it because I just Madison says Brett gives off like she's reading a script. Me too. But I also know people like that. I actually think if I sounded more like I was reading a script, people would watch me more because she does get to the point very quick. All her videos are short and very like precise. So props to her for having a good business model. I think that this is a subject that often gets brushed over these days, even though so many people are waking up to the impacts of porn, the dangers of Pornhub, the company itself, and their stats for 2022 <laughs> were just insane. So I did that video, but I've been thinking a lot about OnlyFans because OnlyFans is kind of the exception in the porn discussion. A lot of people say, well, it's so empowering. They're uploading their own content. So it's freedom for them and freedom for sex work and all the stuff. And that always just kind of strikes me as odd because you're still like giving so much of yourself away. Yeah, he says, I've never heard of her, but 3 million subbies. Like, yeah, bro, she's got 3 million subscribers. Brett's killing it. And I do think that there is something dark and sinister under the surface that just is not talked about as much because people always use that as like a, oh, we could get rid of Pornhub, but OnlyFans. Oh, it's so great. So I was doing some research and I saw this video and this girl used to be on OnlyFans, later on regretted it. And she's done a couple of videos about this. <laughs> I clipped a significant section from this that I think is important, but I really am just excited to see what you guys have to say uh, just because I, this is a conversation that I have not seen a lot of people have because most of it is centered around like produced porn and Pornhub. All right, anyway, let's get into it. I think this will be cool. This video is just step mm. by step what the negative things about OnlyFans and honestly why you should never make an OnlyFans like ever. 
one of my best friends her name is Carol and she is very successful on the internet and she has so many girl followers and she gets all kinds of brand deals and all kinds of contracts and she worked really really hard on marketing herself we met with each other we were like at the beginning stages of branding our business and I remember her telling me so many times she said girl you better brand yourself the right way. It might take a little longer mm. and it might take a little more work, but it'll be much more worth it at the end of the day. I didn't listen to her. I saw the likes and I saw the followers like pouring in. I just have to say, it it takes a lot of humility and self-awareness to like publicly acknowledge that you've made a mistake or that you've changed. So anytime I see any creator or person saying that, I'm just impressed because it's a rarity these days, sadly. But I didn't really think anything of it. And I just saw the likes. Like, that's really... Yo, Jessica with the T says, Britt does have a script. She records in a studio that is set up to look like she's in a girl room. Or she's a girl in a bedroom to seem more relatable. She dressed it before because people saying it makes her less authentic. Interesting. That's what I always wonder. Isn't that funny? It is interesting being, see, same with branding, right? When you're branding yourself, you're thinking about all those like little things. It's hard. Look, I'm not even going to shit on her. It's so hard out here. So you know what? Props to her for at least getting picked up, you know, by like Daily Wire and doing a thing with them. Because as much as I hate Daily Wire, and I do, right? If I was in that bubble, that would be like a, a version of success, right? So good for Brett for figuring it out so young. But, you know, not my vibe, but it's interesting. I also... I really think sex work is hard in general, like many careers. And I just don't think we talk about other careers being as hard as sex work because I think women are more likely to talk about their jobs. But plenty of men suffer. They're high on the suicide rate, the pressures they feel in their jobs. And I just think like men don't also relate that overlap to sex work. But sex work is hard like other jobs are hard. It's a job. It's difficult. It's hard to deal with clientele. I've seen so many sex workers talk about how they hate it. But again, why don't we talk to the sex workers who are actually having a better relationship with it? Because it can be daunting. And that's why I'm going to make more content about it as well. Because like, look, I like it. But I like it because I am in control of my brand. I am in control of my customers. I am in control of my audience. And I also do a lot of work to attract good audience members. Audience members that I like. Be because most of the girls out here are just looking at money. They're not looking at longevity. But I'm thinking I'll be a sex worker for like the rest of my life. So I'm trying to make sure that I keep a very healthy audience, even if it grows slowly, because I don't want unhealthy audience members that are just going to be messaging me like you do this or you're a, a blah, blah, blah. Like I don't want DMs from people that are writing me like horrible DMs, right? I never get bad DMs. I always get the nicest, most respectful people. Brittany, if you wouldn't mind, are you interested in Brittany? Like, I get the most respectful DMs, okay? And I think that's because, in part, I demand it of my audience. But also, like, those are the customers that I think are worth investing in. So I just want to say I understand people have bad, like, relationships with these things. But it happens in a lot of jobs. All I cared about. Yeah, because you literally <laughs> release hormones when you get likes. It's like, oh, it's like, oh, that felt good. I want more of it. And so, so many young people are duped into thinking that that is like the end all be all of like, it's literally like a chemical reaction in your brain. For a while, I definitely was 100% against making OnlyFans. I was like, no, like I'm already doing too much on Instagram, like things I'm posting my booty all out. Like I don't, I shouldn't make an OnlyFans. But a lot of people kept talking to me about it. Like, oh, you can make this much money a month. And I just kept hearing about it all the time. It is so glamorized. And I think that, is the difference that I see between OnlyFans and Pornhub and even being a stripper is that there are not really people on social media that are like, oh, here's how to be a porn star. Here's how to get into that kind of thing. You'll see some videos of, you know, girls who are strippers and they'll talk about like how much money they've made and that kind of thing. But OnlyFans, they, I mean, you just type in OnlyFans on TikTok and there's all these girls that are like, I was told not to make an OnlyFans, oh, paid my rent in like one video. And I mean, it's, it's glamorized to a wild extent because I think on the surface, a lot of people think that it is low effort, low risk. And a lot of that is perpetuated and pushed by men. A lot of people who are anti OnlyFans, a lot of the men who are anti OnlyFans tell women it's easy, tell women all they need to do be is girls who post. They are the ones who continue to push women into these jobs because the irony is like they're telling women you're worth nothing. 
And you're worth nothing because you can just get a job on OnlyFans. And these women who have no smart relationship with themselves or with the world go, oh, okay, well, if you don't want me, at least I can make money. Because money is the only thing that talks in this world, right? Like money seems to be the only thing that matters to a lot of these people. So it is kind of funny, I think, that it's like a cycle that like creates itself. You're in control. You don't have... Like one time Myron was talking about in his book, he was talking about how... um, uh, Oh, what song was it? Uh, Beyonce's Irresistible no Beyonce's oh one of Beyonce's songs he was like this is like this is like a woman speaking for herself but it was written by a man like a lot of the things men criticize women for were orchestrated and written by by men like do you know what I'm saying so there's like an irony to it have to be fully nude you can do kind of whatever you want in a way because OnlyFans was started as just like a Patreon sort of but without any content guidelines so that's why you can put x-rated content on there but now that's kind of its reputation but I think people see it as like oh I can just like dip my toe in the water for a bit I don't have to do all of this other stuff and it's easy and you know oh all these cool girls are doing it and all these really really attractive skinny gym girls with beautiful blonde like all of that stuff oh they're doing it I should be able to do it too you just don't see that with other like sex work industries i mean like the marketing behind it has been wildly successful whether they intended that or not within the first couple months like right when i made it i was making 10 bands a month like like i was making such that is good that is a big deal though because my question is like how do you do that with an audience like without an audience or do you have an audience if you have an instagram audience Yes, but then you have to have an Instagram that specifically targets that audience, right? So of course, initially, you're always going to make a lot of money. And then it either dies down or you have a consistent audience. When I first started OF, I was making like a lot of money. And then it eventually died down to a really consistent number, basically. And so there's something to be said about like the momentum and then it dies down. And then when it dies down, you have to have a conversation with yourself of, am I going to keep this up even if the numbers go very low? And that's the thing. If it's a job for you, you got to hustle like it's a job. If it's like something you like to do and you're probably going to do it for a really long time, like it doesn't matter. Like I'm honestly, I couldn't imagine even if I couldn't imagine. Well, because I like I post nude stuff for free. So I'm a bad example because I'm not a person who's trying. I would love to make like a ton of money doing all my jobs. But the truth is, is like I'm more than happy to work for 20K a year. <laughs> I don't, I don't, like, I'm not going to lie, right? I've done YouTube my whole life, whether or not it paid my bills or not, because I always had two to three jobs. So I'm probably a bad example of this, but, like, I've been posting nude work, whether it paid me or not. So I'm, I'm not a person, just because, like, I'm more in the nudist bubble or the nude-friendly bubble, I'm not a person who's, like, a normal girl. But if a normal girl came to me and said, I'm only doing OnlyFans for money, I'd be like, cool, would you do law school for money or being a doctor just for the money? Like, are you willing to take on the consequence of doing these jobs? Law school, let's say you're paying for a good college education. Medical school, you're paying for the years that you're going into, you know, education, going into major debt. And then you have to make sure you get a job. For sex work, you're dealing with something that could be on the internet forever. Like, there's always a consequence to your job, right? And that's just the thing. For me, ultimately, I am a creative person. So I just post things because I like to post them and I want to look pretty and I don't care. But I I, I honestly, this is what's making me suffer in my job as well is that like, I'm not a capitalistic brained enough. I need to be more about the money. But the thing is, is like, at least because I'm not always about the money, I never feel bad for what I post versus these girls might be like, wow, I didn't even make money. It's not even worth it. I never have that thought. I never have the thought of, oh my God, I shouldn't have posted that. I didn't even make enough money. Like I never have to deal with that. So, you know, perspective changes things. Easy, quick money. And I honestly started off by just basically posting the same things I was posting on Instagram. And, and this is why it is a scam. After a couple of months, you're going to lose subscribers because they're like only signing up because of the hype. Only fans Oh, she just said it a reputation that's the thing when you hear of an only fans you're you're automatically or even a private snapchat you're automatically thinking like there's porn there's nudes there's yes. sex tapes all on this thing they're really subscribing mm -hmm. just to see the hype right they're mm -hmm. trying to see if they can see your nudes they're trying to see if they can see your sex tapes all of that but then when they see what you're actually posting on there and if it doesn't reach like what they imagine and then what they want to see you doing then they're gonna unsubscribe unless you are okay with being that girl and doing those things and making that a full-time job where you're basically going to be transitioning into a like a porn star it is just like 
still in the social media realm of OnlyFans, like the way that these girls promote it and talk about it. It's like, oh, okay, day in my life is an OnlyFans creator going to this like Airbnb I rented to do a bunch of like it true. It is a full time job. You are a sex worker. And it's really sad sort of what she was saying that like you lose subscribers because people just get bored yeah, of you. And imagine like do. the emotional turmoil that that takes. But that happens to YouTubers. I was just watching Grace Helberg. Helberg? Grace Helberg. Is that her name, guys? I That, that was not my generation. I didn't watch her. But she was just on, um, I think, Anthony Padilla because I was watching um, Tyler Oakley. And they were talking about like, yeah, I once I started going down on subscribers, once they didn't want to watch my YouTube channel anymore, I started to question myself. Was I ever a good content creator? Did it matter if I had 10 million views on a video? Was I ever successful? Like YouTubers have the same problem they literally will question their whole like was I ever good enough in the first place if I'm not continuously like famous if I'm not continuously the buzz if I'm not number one every job where you're a creative and you're selling yourself and then the viewers die off there is always going to be a question of am I not good enough what is wrong with me takes because you're literally bearing your body to people, which is the most intimate thing that you can do without being like in the room with them. And that, ugh, I don't want that anymore. I'm bored of you. And, like, that's awful. Do you not think that is going to happen? That you're not going to have an emotional and physical response to people literally rejecting you and your body every single day? That takes a toll, whether we like it or not. Number two, people are going to steal your photos. That's terrifying mm. also. And people think that OnlyFans is like super safe. But are we such idiots? Like, my generation, we grew up online. Everything that you put out there is going to be on the internet forever. I don't know how this is still a new concept for somebody. Just because it is behind a paywall, you yeah. can still screenshot and screen record. Obviously, you can I am downloaded on the internet myself. It actually really works well for branding, though. I hate to say it. Like, not that I'm encouraging people to do this, but... Literally, there are websites that will leak your OnlyFans, and that usually brings more people to your OnlyFans. Um, so, like, I'm definitely on some websites, and that's just a thing. So, you know, it's just, like, the reality. Like, Mr. Beast even says it. Like, yeah, steal my content and repost it. Make lots of money off me. And I kind of agree with the same model. Yeah, post my shit. I wish people would post my shit more. Because, like, then people see me. And then, you know, that's why I always think it's interesting when TikTokers are like, hey, credit me for this video. Because the truth is, is, like, if people want to know who you are, they'll find you. But the audience members who are never going to look you up are never going to be your subscribers. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're looking for people who actually are interested in you, then it doesn't matter if somebody reposts you without your name. Like, people will find a way to find you. You know what I mean? And so there's just something to be said about that model. Like, I don't care, really, if people repost my stuff without credit. Because, like, you'll find the big-nosed, curly-haired girl who might be trans. <laughs> can get people to take it down. <laughs> But the it will be out there forever. Your private Snapchats, <laughs> people are still screenshotting those and sending those. The fact that we don't even think about that. Actually, I think the funniest OF story is my brother was like, my friends have your OF. And I was like, gross. And he was like, yeah, it's kind of weird. I was like, yeah, it's kind of weird that your friends who are like children, they're like 21 and 22. But I was like, gross. And then I was laughing. I was like, well, um, enjoy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. But like, even my brother's friends got curious and definitely like downloaded shit. And like, look, they might just do it to make fun of me even. Oh my gosh, you girl. It's like, okay, whatever. It's just wild. Whoever subscribes to your account can take your pictures and screenshot and screen record whatever you do. It's not secured. It's not mm. Oh. Yeet says Destiny has the same model on TikTok. It really is good for his growth. He gets millions of views constantly. Can I tell you? I see Destiny all the time. It is so good for his brand. I see him on all these TikToks, all these Instagram posts. I see this kid everywhere. Honestly, props. Like, his branding is so good. It's great. Like, he knows exactly his bubble. He knows exactly his niche. He, like, knows exactly, exactly, like, how to brand himself. It's so good. Like, it, it's so good. It's not private like anybody can take your stuff also it's just insane to me that we went from people freaking out that their nudes were going to be leaked that their sex tapes were going to be leaked the whole kim <sighs> kardashian even though that was like mm, you know planned and <laughs> coordinated by chris jenner and paid for by chris jenner that used to be like the worst thing in the world and now it's like oh well as long as i'm getting paid for it sure go ahead and take them <laughs> discord says who is the slut showing her naked knee on camera actually one of the things i like about brett 
is that she does like sit with her legs up because like that's one of my most favorite positions to sit in. But again, I don't know if that's for the shtick of like I'm in a bedroom, but I'm not actually in my own bedroom. Like I don't know if that's a part of the shtick, but I like that about her like the way she chills. You know what I mean? Um. Ah, it's God. <laughs> the really hard thing to accept for me is that like my anything I had posted on there is all over the internet like you can type in my name and there's like the reddit account that pops up and it doesn't have everything but it has a lot of stuff that I had posted on there and it mm. sucks because if I go and message them and say can you take this all down out of the kindness of your heart because I've transitioned and I'm giving my life over to God and I don't want the stuff on the internet I bet they don't give a crap about how I feel so your stuff no. is on the internet for life and you have to be okay with that if you have a little girl Girl one day and you want your little girl never to do stuff like that but they type in mommy's name to be honest with you and i talk to my partner about this all the time like if we had kids and they wanted to be sex workers would we care and the truth is is like no as long as they're adults as long as they're capable as long as they're doing it for the right reasons again it's the why i just care about why you're doing it okay why are you doing it the same reason when my brothers come to me and go i want to do drop shipping why i want to do crypto why do you think it's going to make you money fast overnight? Can we please go back to where like money will be had slowly? Like guys, I'm never going to be the content creator that makes like a million dollars overnight. I'm going to be the slow and steady saver. Middle class YouTuber saving her money, chipping away at debt or life or whatever, saving up for a house. Like I was talking to my partner's mom about this, like buying a house out here. And I was like, what if I paid for it in cash? She goes, um, girl, do you know how much you'd have to have in savings? And it's a lot of money. I don't know if I'd ever be disciplined enough to hold that much money in my bank account, but it's like half the price of America. And so it is really important. So again, you have to think about the why. Why do you think you need to do it this way? Why do you think you need to be a millionaire overnight? Why do you think you're going to make all your money in one chunk? Why do you think? Why do you think? And it's because America right now, the world right now, it's all about the quick and easy. But slow and steady wins the race, okay? and all that stuff pops up what are you gonna do people okay discord says who uses their real life name for sex work noobs yeah that is a noob move oh my god we should start discord you know who you are we should start a service that helps people start sex work within reason because like y'all don't use your legal name for online content creation like you can if you want but like just pick a fake name like it's legal you know what i mean like pick a fake name took my videos and my pictures that i had posted on there and they went and made a separate like account pretending to be me to make money off my mm -hmm. selling my photos and my videos that i posted mm -hmm. on there and so even if i shut it all down there's accounts that are frauding and pretending to be me to make money off of those photos and videos and again this can happen in so many different industries, especially if you're online. But imagine the additional emotional turmoil of the most intimate parts of you are the ones that are being exploited <sighs> and taken advantage of. It's not just like, oh, somebody screen records my YouTube video and they're posting it. Like, obviously, I'm like, oh, God, don't do that. Like, that's immoral. <laughs> don't try to make money off of something that I'm literally putting on YouTube for free. But it's not anything at this level. Lying to yourself and saying mm. that it's going to have no impact on you, whether emotionally right now or 10 years down the line when you change or you have kids or whatever, it's just ridiculous. And because the internet is so permanent, it's like, why would you take that risk? Three. Yeah, why would you join the military and run the risk of getting PTSD or join the military and have to deal with like all the bullshit that comes afterwards? Or like there are people every day who pick jobs that give them problems later in the future. So it only is going to impact you or maybe will always impact you depending on the job. Look, I can't guarantee that sex work won't impact you because I think every job impacts you. I think existing impacts you. Anthony Padilla says it best when he promotes his BetterHelp sponsorship. He goes, because sometimes um, existence or existing is really difficult, something like that, okay? So it's just one of those things where like existing itself is difficult, okay? So yes, you can think about, oh, what, you know, but you could say that right now. What if Brett Cooper became like a progressive one day? Let's say she had like a conversion and became a progressive. Wouldn't she say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I made all that conservative content. I can't believe when I was young and under 30, I made all this content that moved people more towards the right. I can't believe I did. Yes, 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 I know. But that's the burden of life. Welcome to existing, right? Um, Joel says construction workers. Yes, construction workers. They have to deal with so many consequences to their body years down the road. 
So again, I understand and people have a real connection to sex in a way that I understand is like super vulnerable for some people. And it is to an extent, but it is one of those things where like, you know, we all use our body in different ways. You know what I mean? I actually was listening to some like um, band guys, like guys in boy bands, talk about how they don't like it when women objectify them, but also it is a part of how they sell tickets. Like half of how they sell their music is girls who are in love with them. And then they started to question themselves, like, am I even a good artist if the only reason my music sells is because girls think I'm hot? But that's the thing. It's like, it's both. Girls think you're hot and they fall for your music and fall in love with the narrative. But also I understand that we're always going to question is my work good enough if there's a level of my audience is in love with me? I get it. It's hard. That is a hard reputation to break. Like, I don't know how many comments I get of like, you have OnlyFans, like, shut up. You got OnlyFans. Like, you're going to lose respect. Okay, that's true. You are going to. Actually, one of the things that I thought was kind of annoying was like, when I was more in the boy groups of things, people would be like, oh, Brittany does OnlyFans. And I'm like, yeah, but like YouTube is my primary job. But it didn't matter. They were like, nope, OnlyFans is your primary job now because you do OnlyFans. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't hang out with people this dumb. Like, I get it. I'm not ashamed of it. But it is interesting that my YouTube never mattered the moment I did OnlyFans. Like, even Sneeko assumed I made more money on OnlyFans than YouTube. But no, I make most of my money off YouTube. And so it is kind of funny. But I get it. But also, it's just like, extrospection like they don't have a relationship with other bubbles so they don't know and I'm not a full-time sex worker like if I was a full-time sex worker it'd be different than I would but I'm a part-time sex worker on purpose because I give more of my time to YouTube if I gave less of my time to YouTube and focus more on sex work it'd be different but I made the decision years ago to put most of my time into YouTube that's what I decided now who knows if that changes because once I become a muscle mommy I've been working out <laughs> I might just switch to sex work full time and choke bottoms. But like, you know what I mean? I get it. I get it. Maybe YouTube will become my hobby in the future and sex will be sex work will become my full time job. But for now, like YouTube is my full time job and sex work is my part time job. And that's just how I've decided to model it. But it is interesting and you will lose respect. Who cares? Tell them to go die in a ditch and watch the sunset. Who cares? But you might care if you need to fit into a bubble. You might care if you need it for a certain reason. But I, like, honestly, I just don't hang out with those people. That's what I'm saying. Like, my audience is a majority women. My audience is a majority sex positive. My audience is majority, like, awesome, queer, unique, different, neurodivergent. Like, I don't have to run the risk of worrying about what anti-sex communities think about my work because they were never my audience to begin with. Right? You want to question the matrix? Start questioning why you hate sex workers, you weirdos. Honestly, I didn't make a lot of smart choices for myself when it came to branding and marketing myself. Definitely learning to be very, very careful on myself of like who I choose to work with. Make sure that you have very high standards for yourself. If you're trying to be an influencer, you are a brand. So be very picky on who you work with and what you do. I mean, guys, you're basically getting like behind the scenes of my life and the work that we do here as well. Integrity is super important to me and I never want to feel like I'm lying to an audience and like giving you one side of me. But I've said, I think that the best way I can describe it, there's kind of like, you know, this is comment section, Brett, and there's kind of a point where that ends. And then there's like the more personal side of me that, you know, I choose to keep private for my own sanity and the people in my life. But the comment section, Brett, even though it is authentically me, I still have to think of it mm. as a brand and as a business mm -hmm. because this mm -hmm. is my reputation that is now mm -hmm. so public and permanently online. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. just throw this away. And I'm in a position now where I have a lot of eyes on me. But for any young people that, you know, have a few thousand followers that are just online in general, people who are hiring you for jobs, even like getting into schools that's the first thing they do these days mm. is pull up your instagram i was terrified when i was applying for law schools because i was like oh my so true when my sibling became a teacher legit the first thing they did was check their facebook and their instagram and they were like take down all the photos of you drinking alcohol even though like my family doesn't drink very often it's like very rare like so rare anyone in my family drinks um my sibling had like a couple of photos of them drinking and right away they had to take them all down because they were um, having problems being teachers at the school because of reputation. So like it, it is a thing that really exists and Brett is right on this. You know what I mean? Like 
this is a part of whatever bubble you're in. Think about that thing. Like I, I decided at like 21, 22, 21, 22, 23, 24, 23. I don't remember. Whatever, however old I was in 2012, 2013, I basically gave up on any of those ideas. Though I always nanny too. Um, but again, like, you know, have a different online name than your private name. You know what I'm saying? So when employers Google you, they don't find you. God, like I'm super political on my Instagram pages. What are they going to think? And I decided not to hide it at all. I even put it in my, you know, essays and statements that I was sending off to these law schools and was like, sure. Yeah, this is something I'm really proud of. And it paid off. But again, it is permanently. I'm sorry. Is she a lawyer? She looks like she's literally 21. Somebody Google for me. Is Brett Cooper a lawyer? Or is she just in law school? Online. Your reputation is so important. You can't <sighs> change your reputation after it has been solidified in pe people's minds. You can't change your reputation that's been solidified in closed-minded people's minds. People change. Individuals can get better. You are not just your past. You are also your present. And if you are presently different, okay, like people do change and the right people will see that in you and you could always move. Truly start over, start again, do the thing, okay? But you can change, okay? Your reputation might stay the same in some people's minds, but what good are those people? Write them off. There's 8 billion people. You don't need those 4, 5, 6, 20, 100. Write them off. Next, if you know you've changed, you've changed. You, you just can't. And there's a lot of people who look at this kind of, you know, video and hear what I'm saying and what she's saying. <clears throat> They're like, well, that's a societal problem that sex workers don't have respect and that they can't. I'm like, I don't really know if it is. I think that porn and sex work and prostitution stripping, I think that that is a societal ill. I don't think that those people... Ooh, Yeet says she's 21 and just finished college. If sex work is a societal ill, then all of humanity has been sick since day one and should kill itself. If sex work is a societal ill, then all of society has been sick since day one and should just destroy itself. Or we can have a healthy relationship with sex work. Like we try to have a healthy relationship with other things, and but then again, we don't maybe, and that's the problem. Do we even have a healthy relationship with police work or with being teachers or with being priests or with being radio hosts or content creators? Do we have a healthy relationship with being lawyers? Wait, what is this healthy relationship we have with jobs? Did I get the memo? Do we have those things until now? Like, isn't this the first generation that's actually asked for us to have a healthy relationship with those things? So society has a problem because we don't have a healthy relationship with anything we're doing. Not just sex work are necessarily bad because they're just trying to make money. But I think on a whole, I don't think it's good for us. So I think it deserves the scrutiny that it, you know, has as an industry. Anyway, those are my two cents about that. I just thought that it was interesting that she was talking about branding because it's, that's literally, when we turn <laughs> off the cameras, those are the conversations that we're having about like, all right, you know, what new project are we going to do? How is this going to tie into what I'm already doing? It's like a very big picture ordeal. You are a brand. Whether you have any followers or not, you are still a brand. Like, you're your name. Like, you have to be very picky and have high standards of what you want people to know you as. So if you do do that and you try to break free from that, there are people that are going to remember and keep that over your head that you ever chose <laughs> to make that decision in your life. Four. I have no, I only have two nails on my finger. Same. Love now him. that I'm rebranding myself and I'm trying to get away from OnlyFans and not do OnlyFans, um, I see like a huge drop in my income if I don't do OnlyFans and I feel stuck sometimes that I have to continue to do OnlyFans in order to make any money. There's a lot of opportunities taken away from you. Like if I want to go be an actress, how many people are going to hire me? Yeah, so there's times where like it gets to me and I know it's the enemy, I know it's the devil, just saying like you might as well just continue doing that because you're gonna it's gonna be really hard for you to be successful in life and do anything else i can't be a teacher i know i could be a rapper because there are rappers who are strippers cardi b was a stripper rapper but i don't want to be a rapper um that's always gonna get brought up or it can be searched up they can just search up my name and then boom cardi b is on OnlyFans. i wanted to jump in here briefly going back mm -hmm. like a minute or so where she was talking about you know taking the easy way out not you know going back to OnlyFans because you're going to make more money and that sort of thing and you know trying to be above that and hold yourself to a higher standard i mean we see that 
all the time with these, especially female influencers, that blow up. I mean, I'm talking about the Addison Rays, the Alex Earls, like both of those girls started off making, you know, an innocent makeup video, an innocent, you know, fully clothed dance video. People obviously dug through their past. I think Alex Earl was at one point publicly in favor of Trump and Addison Ray people like dug up all of this stuff and she was registered Republican or something like that. And it was like both of these girls took like a hard turn and, you know, covered up any past of like them talking about any opinions and they kind of became this like personality less, faceless. Well, isn't that just what she's saying about branding though? They just became a different brand. They might be different behind closed doors, but they were a brand, right? Just like I told you when I did conservative talk radio and we did that promo it was like i had to be the lesbian conservative shtick like that was the shtick i would have to do forever because it's a brand they didn't care what i did behind closed doors but i was like well what if i'm different later pansexual ass me me literally like 12 years later being like what what is a lesbian i'm pansexual what i like it all and then it's just like you know what i'm saying like that's what a brand is you have to stay to the shtick so your com like your community knows what they're coming back to which is I, again it makes sense for getting the bag but everyone has to do that even if you're a talk radio host if you change your opinions or go against the grain like you'll be kicked out of the flock that's why it's ironic i was watching papa gut and apparently some conservatives like mostly like the like, super super conservatives they're like anti ben shapiro now because he's quote unquote like um a bot he's quote unquote like been bought up by the elite which is so funny to me i'm like yes turn on ben shapiro what are you doing but i get it because like they'll see ben as like a brand they'll see him as like less less authentic right and i just think that's interesting but i get it right if brett ever was not a conservative she wouldn't work at the daily wire right like if brett ever in public wanted to be a progressive she wouldn't work at the daily wire but as long as she stays a conservative even in public she'll probably have a job yeah she'll be put under the same temptation as every girl who leaves only fans and thinks should i go back for the money everyone feels this way at their job at some point and by everyone asterisk a lot of people feel this way at their jobs okay a lot of people feel like, oh my gosh, do I stay with this job that pays me or do I do something that's more within my values or do I do something that's more aligned with like who I am at my core, right? Ask any environmentalist, right, who struggles. Should I go to work and work for this company that kills trees? People think they're stupid for asking that. Stick to the money, stick to your job. But when it comes to OnlyFans, people are like, don't choose the money. It's a job. A job's a job, a job is a job. Body basically and even though they're not like only fans people they make money off of the male gaze they know that they really don't have to do much other than you know dancing around in tight low-cut shirts because that's easy it is very very easy to get it's not easy to deal with the hate and deal with the issues and deal with the problems if it was so easy people would do it more they do do it but they're also quitting because it's not easy it's not easy. It's simple. It's also simple to grift. Just say things that aren't true to appeal to a certain audience until they're convinced they like you and want to give you their money. It's easy to grift. It's easy to be a conservative. It's easy to be anything as long as all you have to do is talk. But it's not easy, is it? Because you have to keep up the shtick. Get rich and get famous by just being a pretty girl that is willing to cross the line just a little bit it's just like that is just a fact and even if you just like accidentally cross that line a bit or dip your toe into it like these guys these this audience like they will hone in on you and start to see you that way and that's why especially as somebody that is on the internet i am so careful <laughs> so careful about what gets put out there because my reputation is so important to me and I because you're afraid of people and you're afraid of being misunderstood and you're afraid of the mob and you're afraid of the men and you're afraid of the misunderstanding. Yeah, you're afraid of your reputation. You're afraid of people. People are scary in a mob, right? People are scary. But in create instead of creating an environment where we can encourage people to be less scary, we're just like toe the line, be afraid of people, do what they say, don't be an OnlyFans creator, don't give in... Be an individual, figure out how to make it work. People are people. They're always going to be stupid in crowds. People are always going to be stupid in numbers. You cannot live your life because people are like in fear because people are dumb as a mob. They are. They are dumb as a mob. Okay. So Brett can live with her anxiety. I can live with mine. Right. But it is because we're afraid of people overreacting. But they're going to do that no matter who you are. They're going to do it no matter what bubble you're in because there's always a bubble that's anti your bubble. 
So it doesn't matter. Vash with the super chat. Thank you so much. The same in the corporate world, HR and hiring uh, board people who have always told me that past a certain point, if you're unmarried, any political con controversy, et cetera, you won't get above middle management. Yep. Yeah. Like there's always a game to be played. No matter what job you have, what bubble you're in, there's always a game. That's why I said you have to know who you are and you have to know what game you're playing in order to be successful. You have to know who you are and what game you're playing. Okay? She knows who she is. Brett Cooper's smart. She knows who she is and what game she's playing. That's why she has to be so careful about what she says. Because her reputation. Because it will ruin her game. I don't blame her. We're all playing a game. But I never want to lead anybody <laughs> down the path of like some idea that I would be even willing or interested in doing anything like that, that I would think it was appropriate for myself. And it's just a very, mm -hmm. very risky world. Fame and wealth and wanting the clicks and the likes, it is enticing. And I think for a lot of people who feel stuck or they want the attention, maybe they're insecure, they want to immediately jump into it. And also our society just kind of glorifies that in a way, which I talked about at the beginning that women want to do that. They don't realize that 10 years down the line, that's still going to be on there. Our, when I was growing up, do you guys remember three days, um, three doors down, three days, do three doors down military videos? They used to glorify the fuck out of the military. Like awesome songs, three doors down, cool videos. They would glorify, seduce, and convince young men, 18 to 19 to 20, to join the military, to be part of this amazing group of people, only to give those men PTSD, CPTSD, issues with their mental health, problems with debt, torturing them in boot camp. You can say this about any industry. The military is one of the most conniving, man like manipulative organizations that seduce men and convince them, give me your body. Let me use your body. You don't need your body when I can use it better. I'll give you so many benefits. It will be so good if you give me your body. Only to destroy it in the meantime. Only to destroy their mental health. Only to destroy everything so they can get out of the military with what? 20K? Cool. 20K a year? Popping. Let me tell you, as a person with four brothers who went to the military, not one of them going to be bragging about the experience, okay? Or, you know, internet digital passport record, basically. That's always going to get brought up or it can be searched up. They can just search up my name and then boom, all these things pop up. So might as well, you, know, you already did it. And it's going to be really hard to walk away from it now. So you might as well just keep doing it now. <laughs> and then the fifth one is just you're worth more. And that's something that I didn't realize about it when I had signed up. It's just you're worth more than like people paying to see like your body and stuff. Like your body is worth so much more. That's I, most important I'm point. I'm still sexy and I'm still cute. I like my body. You know what I'm saying? I don't go like into hiding or something like that uh, moving forward. Okay, says so your body is valuable if it's for the country. Yeah. Forward. I, one thing is just like, oh, I just saw that I could make money with my body and I just used my body to make money. And that's like not much different than just like prostitution, <gasps> honestly. In the digital age, she is absolutely spot on. And I think a lot of people get freaked out by that. And they're like, no, I'm not, I'm not. But prostitution is very outdated these days my mom and i were having this conversation over christmas just about porn it has totally changed in the last 15 years probably because you used to you know you would have to go to adult theaters and watch the movies in an audience with a lot of other people or then you could go to blockbuster and you would go into the adult film section and you had to have like a vhs tape or a dvd player and you know not very many people had that at that time and then it became more and more digital to the point that it's literally right here so you can't really make the argument that it's no like worse than prostitution when this literally is the 2023 sex work basically and the you're worth more i think is arguably the most important point made in this entire video hold yourself to a higher standard when i was still acting i think the highest standard i would want to hold people to is if you're not in survival mode i would love it if you could find your joy living your best life regardless of what people think about you play the game so you can do exactly what you want in life that's healthy happy joyous, smooth, and peaceful, and loving, and worthy, and kind, just like all the good words. Do what gets you to your best place, regardless of what people say about you. Because no matter who you are, 
people have something to say about you. If you're conservative, the progressive hates you. If you're progressive, the conservative hates you. If you're a sex worker, the prudes hate you. If you're a prude, the sex workers hate you. It doesn't matter. Everyone hates you. That's why you have to be the person who doesn't hate you. Because you know that as long as you're joyous, happy, kind, thoughtful, considerate, warm, wholesome, there's a relationship to be had with yourself that is, that is worthy, that is good, that is fine. I just, this is what I would want for the world. Probably around the time when I was 16, because I always read for older roles, even as like a 13-year-old, I'd be going up for 15-year-old roles. I hit puberty earlier. So I was always in more mature situations in comparison to, you know, my peers and my actual age. So I think it was around the time that I was 16 and I was starting to go out for characters that were, you know, 18, 19, whatever. And I started getting auditions even as a minor for projects that included nudity whether it was like a sex scene or like a frontal whatever. And I started seeing a lot of these and I would turn them down and I finally drew a really firm line in the sand with my reps and I was like, I am never going to do this. I don't care if it's like intentional in the movie or whatever. Out of respect for myself and not wanting to be seen that way, I'm not gonna do that. And that's one thing like being in a movie or whatever, but then just putting yourself out on everybody's, you know, social media and just having access to those parts. Yeah, does anyone know what Brett acted in? Of you? It says, I, it's, I struggle to think of like how you get yourself into that mindset that that's comfortable and that's okay and that people in your life are not going to be concerned about it. Because it just seemed like the most disrespectful thing that I could do to my, you know, future husband and future children. That's my kind of personal anecdote in this is that that was a personal. Exactly. To you. In your reality. For you. That makes sense. I don't want my modest sister-in-law or my or the women in my life who are modest. I don't want them to feel pressured to do OF or be slutty or anything. One time I showed up to my sister-in-law's house with a um, halter top on and I wrapped a blanket around me and I came into the house because I was heading on a trip. And I was like, hey, guys, I had to drop this off. And my brother's like, why are you wearing a blanket around you? And my sister-in-law goes, oh, I saw what she was wearing. She is basically naked. I was like, I'm in a halter top. Everybody relax. <laughs> I was in a halter top with a skirt and an open back. But it was so funny. And look, my sister-in-law loves me. I love her. She's like the best in the whole West. Like she's just so lovely. But I don't need to be different than who I am to get along with modest and conservative people. And she doesn't need to be different than who she is. But do we make accommodations for each other? Yes, we do. Do I make accommodations when I'm visiting? Yes, I do. Because it's their home. But when they come to visit my home, I rarely change. I'm sorry. I'm like, look, y'all, you came to my house. Okay, I'll do my best to cover up my tits. But otherwise, like, suck it up, buttercup. The, a hard line that I drew. And it had an impact because I got less auditions and as I was getting older and that became very, very normal. I mean, think of the euphorias, think of, you know, all of these TV shows that, you know, include a lot of like basically soft porn these days. That was never going to be stuff that I was willing to do. And I was fine with that. I was like, I'll Good. lose. Honestly, based. Based. Like, that's great. I love that. Have your boundaries, girl. Stick to your values. Jobs. I do not care. That is not something I will do. <clears throat> Uh, and I still stand by that. So mm -hmm. that's kind of my contribution. But anyway. The last Please. thing to say is that some people do use OnlyFans for other things. I have kind of tried to shift my OnlyFans over to like more Ooh, workout videos. So if you guys mm. want to see workout videos, go subscribe to my OnlyFans. <laughs> Besides what I was posting on there, no, I don't want to do stuff like that anymore. And that's going to be really hard for me. Oh, you know what I just realized? Correct me if I'm wrong. Brett edited this video right didn't she say she edited it down so we could watch it together if she did it's nice that she edited the part where she still has an only fans and she said to go subscribe for workout videos i think that's really nice if brett did that if that legit is what she did i appreciate that energy because she's basically saying that i allowed this girl to promote herself on my big show in front of a lot of people a million people saw this video and she's the one who edited it down so major props to brett if she did that the sisterhood is alive and well in bread. I appreciate that. It's a breakthrough. That was a decision that I make and I have to deal with the consequences. I love her. Moving forward of like <clears throat> how that's going to affect my life now on. If I have a daughter, if I have a son. There are problems that come later in the future with 
an OnlyFans. Like, that's just facts. If you think you're going to make an OnlyFans and there's not going to be problems, there's going to be problems. Don't rely on OnlyFans as your income at all. And I really just want you guys to learn from my mistakes and not have to make the same mistakes. But I do love you guys. That's why I'm saying this. Like, I care about my followers and I care about you guys and I care about women in this world that you guys don't have to go through the same problems as me and learn from my mistakes. I mean, she said that last part better than I could. This is a fantastic example of how to take accountability for your choices. She's not victimizing herself. She's learning from her mistakes. She's trying to be an example. I loved it. That was great. I mean, these are the types of people that, you know, girls on the internet should be able to look up to, you know, who have made mm. mistakes and who are, you know, willing to bestow that knowledge on younger women or women around them. It's just very, very cool. So I loved this video. Go subscribe to her channel if you're interested. She's done some other videos that are very similar to this. I'm just excited that I got to kind of like dip my toe in the water with this kind of conversation because it's just, that's just a crazy, <laughs> crazy platform and the social media hype and defense of it hmm. is just wild. And so I think I like barely scratched the surface with this and there's a lot more that I want to research and uncover with it, but this was fantastic. So if you guys have any experience with OnlyFans or any stories, you know, of course, drop them in the comments. I'm always reading those and learning from them. So hope you guys have a fantastic day. I'll see you next time. Woo woo. Okay. What did we guys, what do you guys think? Like, okay, again, and let me go to like, oh, that's not a good, uh, girl, I'm just trying to get a nice, okay, that's good enough. Um, okay, there we go. Um, okay, so overall, the, I kind of like Brett for this reason. Like, she seems really open-minded, but also knows where she's heading, knows her values. I think what's important is that there has to be a conversation about our intentionality. What is our intention for our communities? What is our intention for ourselves? Look, I'm a hardcore independent thinker. I want independent people. I want individuals to be the focus. I want you guys to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and your butt plugs. I want you guys to make that bag or stay humble. I want you guys to be wholesome or be slutty. I want you guys to be joyous. I want you guys to be joyful. I want you guys to figure out how to make it work in a world that isn't designed for you right? Like you can keep complaining about the world and saying it's shifting, right? The ironies, every time the world shifts, somebody feels like, oh, I can't believe the world is changing. It's not working for me anymore. Try being a person the world has never worked for. The world doesn't work for people like me. So if you're anywhere close to somebody like me, you're always just figuring out how to make it in the world that was never made for you. No one is ever purely happy enough to just let people exist. We always have to convert. We always have to change. We always have to shift. We always have to, I'm so exhausted. I just want to live. But you can't because we live in a community. We live in a society. And so a lot of it is adapting, understanding, being patient with them, being patient with yourselves. So like I could chill with a person like Brett. I think she seems pretty dope. And at the same time, we're obviously not hoping the same things for society. I want more freedom in a very particular way for a very particular reason. I want, and I think she probably wants freedom in a very particular way it, for a very particular reason. Yeah, I wonder if I talk to her, if we would agree on our versions of freedom. That's what's interesting. Okay. Yeah, if I could talk to someone like Brett, I'll reach out to her. Maybe she would talk to me. I don't know. I kind of doubt it because she's so much bigger and like she's probably has to stick to a specific strip to, script of who she can talk to. But if she'll talk to me, I think we could have a good convo, especially as a former conservative. Like, I think it'd be fun. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 d